Hey everyone, I'm Chef Tom and welcome to my workbench. Today I'm going to take a look at the Diag 64 cart and how to set it up to be a diagnostics cartridge for the Commodore 64 and the 128. So the Diag 64 cart is based on the Versus 64 cart, which gives you a lot of options on what you want to load through it. Big difference is on the Diag 64, you have the option to load four different images with these switches. Now what we're going to do today is set up to be diagnostics cart for the 64 and the 128, which removes its ability to be a dead test cart. But that's okay. I already got one of those. So let's see what we have to do. The Diag 64 cart has four settings if you're using a larger EEPROM VR. We're using a 27C256, which is the ideal one for this, luckily. Um, with the switches mounted, we have four options. Switch 1 can be down or up. Switch 2 can be down or up. Uh, you'll see switch 1 controls the game, the XROM, the chip select. Uh, and A13, switch to literally just controls A14. So in the default configuration, we get four images, and we get two diagnostics and two dead tests, which is great, uh, you know, if we're only going to work on a C64, but I want to use this on my 128. So we can scroll down here, and you can see here, EEPROM type 256, no modifications are required, so we don't have to do that. I want to make a C64 and 128 diagnostic cartridge. I already have a completely separate dead test cartridge, and I'm fine with that. I don't mind switching out the cartridges when it's time to do that. Um, the C128 requires both game and XROM to be high, open, and the chip select OE to be set to the same as ROM low. So for this, we open jumper four, jumper one, and close jumper two on the, bo on the board. We'll have to do that after we make the EEPROM. While the 8K memory at zero and 4,000 are reserved for C64 software, and the 8K banks at 2,000 and 6,000 are reserved for C128 software. Okay, so we've got two blocks for C64 and two blocks for 128. So if we come back up to our switches here, this will change. So instead of diagnostic, this will now say Commodore 64 low. Commodore 64 high, and our dead test will become our C128 low and C128 high. Switch one will control whether we have a C128 or a C64, and switch two will pick which one of the tests. Now that we know what we're going to build, let's go ahead and build a case for this. I downloaded a generic cartridge STL from Thingiverse and a 3D template to mark where the switches go, and in Fusion 360 we use it as a tool to mark where our cutouts are going to be. Taking a minute to clean up the edges of the cutouts so it's easier to slide the switch into them. I'm going to go ahead here and add some extra support for the PCB so it doesn't wobble around so much. And don't forget to emboss the Diag64 logo. Now we can send it to the printer. With our case ready to go, we can start actually building the board. It's actually a very simple board. There's only a number of passive components and one IC. I'm going to use a socket for the moment in case I have to make any changes to the EEPROM. If I don't get it right the first time, I wouldn't want to have to desolder and resolder an EEPROM more than once. Besides that, we have three 10K resistors, one 330 ohm resistor for the LED, the LED itself, and a reset switch. You also need two miniature double pull double throw switches, 
but I don't have any of the right size on hand, so I'll have to run up to you, do it electronics. And of course, our 27C256 EEPROM. Start with your lowest profile components first and work your way up, just like any other soldering project. The 27C256 needs UV light in order to blank the chip, so we'll make sure we get that nice and well covered in UV light and take it over to the programmer. Alright, so let's check that our device is blank. Our device is in fact blank and ready to be written to. Okay. So you could take the time, go to the command line, go to Windows subsystem for Linux, however you're happy with it. Go in and concatenate all these files together. That's totally fine. You could do that. I've seen lots of people do that. There's nothing wrong with it. But in the XG Pro software, there's a way to concatenate them without having to go out and do all that. You just load in an offset. So our very first one that we want to load is 588-6220 or for the Commodore 64. And for the moment, each time we're going to say disable clearing the buffer and we're going to leave this at zero because this is going to load in zero. Yeah, no, we're going to still load it in normal mode. Okay, now for our second file, we need the 789 test. We're gonna load it normal, but we're gonna load it at, I gotta see. O2000. Hi, editing Tom here. What I am changing is the load from file offset, not the load to buffer offset. I'll show you what it does wrong, but I'm going to cut out about 15-20 minutes of me just getting extremely frustrated with why it's not working. Yeah, it has one more digit there than you're expecting. So, at 2000, and again, do not clear the buffer. And we'll do this again for our other two. Four diag... 411. I'll set that at 4. Do not clear the buffer. And we're going to load MC128 DAG Division 11. And we're going to put that at 6000. And again, do not clear the buffer. Okay. So now I've loaded all of the files. And hey, editing Tom again. What I've actually done is reload to the first part of the file and loaded data that doesn't exist in the other files, so it's not overriding it, so I'm not seeing the text change immediately on the screen after each load. I'm just about to realize this. Buffer start out as I read that wrong. That's why it didn't work. Okay, now we want to load 789. Buffer start address 02000. Ha 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 ha. Do not clear the buffer. But if we go to 02000. Hey, we've got more data. Okay. Load. 64 diag 411. Do offset. Load. 4000. Disable clearing the buffer. And load. The 128 diag. 1.1. And you will go to buffer offset 6000, not file offset. And again, do not clear. Okay. 
Now if I scroll through here, there should be data. Oh, look, there's data all the way through now because I can read. All right. So let's program it and see how it goes. Programmed, verified, succeeded. Okay. Now we can go through listen to 128 and see what it does. Several days later. I really have no idea why Adrian Black loves these machine turned pins so much. I find them to be way more difficult to get chips into if the pins aren't exactly perfect. And so with some of these new old stock chips, they're just never going to be perfect. I'm pretty sure it's new all stock and not pulled, but I don't think I'm ever going to get this chip in. I got one side, but I can't get the other because there's just a little bit of bend in each of them. They don't all line up. I can't get them all into the holes at the same time. Just... Oh, oh, oh. Are we there? Are we there? Nope, nope. I'm bending a pin. See? Double wipe. That's going to make contact every time. It's just going to go in every time. Like one pin. To the there we go. So one of the things I was concerned about with this setup was this was going to be too tall and that was clearly the case because I mean, it fits on that side and it rocks right there and what's right there no chip. so for testing i'm going to leave this out and then before i go and put the cart together finally i'll have to desolder the socket and solder the chip straight in it is what it is I finally made it up to you do it electronics got my two switches came back soldered them on now we have one last thing to do before we can actually test this remember when we were looking at the chart we have to open jumper one open jumper four and close jumper two that will set it up so switch one on the left can give us either a 64 or 128 and switch two on the right will give us access to two different diagnostic programs for each system I'm just going to check real quick that the traces I cut are actually cut and we should be good to go. Beep, that's good. We just need to close up jumper two. And with that, this card is ready to test. As you can see with the double there, it's not even easy to put in. See how this goes. It takes a second, that's the retro tink. Yeah, there's definitely some issues with this computer, but it did launch the diagnostic. It's already telling me that U11 and U22 are bad, which is pretty obvious that U22 is bad from the weird colors. Let's see what we get. Um, the Diag 4.1. It, like, there we go. PLA test, and no good. Yeah. Who told you that? Alright. So clearly, this particular computer has an issue. The diagnostics card is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. I'm going to call that a win. I can't test it on my 128 right now, but if those two work, then I'm going to assume the others do, and I did it right. Um, I can't test it on the 128, though, because I um, was rebuilding the power supply, because I didn't like the giant project case it was in, and I was making a video about it, and I shorted out the transformer, and I had to order another one, because I'm an idiot. So, yeah. It'll be a few days before I get that video out. I had thought 
that I turned on the camera while I was desoldering the socket from the board, but apparently I forgot. So we'll go right back to soldering the chip into the board. I didn't want to do this more than once, which is why I put the socket in, because then I would only have to desolder once and resolder again anyway, no matter how many mistakes I made, so I thought it was a good plan. But by dumb luck, I got it right the first time, so now I'm desoldering and resoldering for no reason whatsoever. Uh, after this, we'll just throw it in the case and be done with it. It's a nice fit, the card doesn't move around, there's no pressure on the outside. I think this is going to make a nice diagnostic cartridge. Alright, so the Diag64 cart was a rousing success, as best as I can tell. Of course, I've got to wait till I get the 128 power supply back up and running, we can see what the 128 diagnostics say. As far as this Commodore 64 that I was using to test it, well, as you can see right there, that's bad color RAM. But that's a story for another day. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, go ahead and press that subscribe button in the center of the screen. I've also got a couple other videos I think you might enjoy.